Welcome to another episode of Metra AV Tech Tips. Today's going to be a little different. You can tell I'm kind of sitting down uh, in a chair. I'm, I'm kind of close and single by myself here on the camera. Uh, and that's because we're trying something new. So with us today, we've got Brett. Hi there. <laughs> uh, I'm, just the, I'm the good looking one in the red shirt with the name more prominently laid out on the background video. So what you're saying is that I, I need to just stay like this then, right? I need to go ahead and cover that up. No, no, yeah. no, you, no, no. You need to mirror image your hands to the other side. Oh, oh, gotcha. Okay, so like this. No, no, no Anyways. other side. <laughs> so everybody, welcome to uh, Metro AV Tech Tips. Uh, we are uh, trying out a new system with us. Brent is on the West Coast. Uh, he's out in California and sunny. I'm socially distancing from Adam. As, about as Not far as, as you physically can. But mostly just because... I'm socially distancing from Adam. <laughs> so uh, what we're talking about today, of course, has uh, to do with the doing math. And I know that like two weeks ago, I tried <laughs> doing some math and uh, it, it did not work out very well, did it? Uh, but hopefully this time around, uh, we're going to get this right and correct. 
Um, now, actually, uh, so we are talking about HDMI bandwidth uh, and how to calculate bandwidth and why it's important. Um, and so, Brent, um, a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the show. Um, we're going to Cedia. Um, we are, uh, we're definitely going to be there. That's, and, and unless CD itself shuts down, we're going, uh, at least that's been the, the, the going decision around here anyways. Um, and so uh, I believe we're at booth 4,200, if that sounds familiar, Brent, right, right next to a restaurant, right next to a restaurant. Um, and just down the, just down the way from the JVC booth, which is like right in that center spot, um, on, uh, on one of the walkways. Um, we're super excited about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, I'm super excited. Everybody. Yeah, everyone's going to be there. Um, and so we're, we're just, we're beside ourselves excited. So, um, everyone who's uh, watching the video today, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about whatever, whatever it is that we're talking about today, you can feel free to leave your comments over in the chat section over there on the other side of Brent. Uh, or if you're watching this after the fact, you can leave it down in the comment section below. And of course we do monitor those and try to respond to those as quickly as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave that down below Hello. or over in the chat. Yes, I have disappeared because Tom Commonall is trying to call in. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Brent, um, now Am I back? what we are, you're, you're back. Yep. You're there. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can see you. There I am. Yeah. Tom there just tried to call in on top of us. Okay, well, that's all right. Oh, it's a, it's a sales guy, so, that, you know, it, it happens that way. Uh, anyways, so, Brent, um, the topic today, of course, we're talking about HDMI bandwidth and, and why it's important and what's going on. So let's start with what is bandwidth? Let's, let's do a recap of that really quick and just kind of well, fill us in. The, the biggest issue we run into is, honestly, it's the same thing people do with the Internet. When they talk about speed, you know, 48 gigs of speed, it's a high-speed cable or an ultra high speed cable, they tend to think of individual data bits moving faster, which is not the case. It's actually how many cars or how much data can get from point A to point B in a given time. So instead of thinking as an individual vehicle moving faster, think of a larger roadway with more lanes so more cars can travel at the same higher speed. And I, I think you really nailed That's it with that. With this. Yeah, and I think you really nailed it with the the time frame. There, there has to be uh, that. That's what that's what makes bandwidth more than just a piece of data. It's a piece of data over a period of time, or an amount of data over a period of time, right? Um, it's getting you know a gig's worth of information from point A to point B, and how long is that going to take to get that information across? Right. Right. An, ele an electron is going to travel at the same speed an electron travels. Yeah. That part's not going to vary. The real question is how big of a pipe and how many electrons can we send in a given point in time? If we have a small roadway, we can only send a few amounts of data all at the same speed, but they kind of have to line up behind each other. Right. As the road gets wider, we can have cars beside each car. So instead of one car, we can have two, four, eight, 10, 12, depending on the width of the roadway. And that's what bandwidth is. Bandwidth is the width of the road, not how fast the devices are traveling on the road. So about a month ago, I was tasked with going to Texas to do a, a training on this specifically. And so I, I took some time and retaught myself about bandwidth. And I actually, um, there's many of these calculators out there that calculate HDMI bandwidth online. Uh, they're all over the place, Meridio, um, uh, some other like um, universities and whatnot have their own calculators Extron. and whatever else. Uh, Extron, yep. And so what I did was I decided that, well, in order for me to fully understand what's going on, I needed to kind of build my own calculator. So I did. So uh, I'll go ahead and put this up here on the screen. By the way, everyone who's watching, um, this calculator is available for download. Um, it's in the it's in the description uh, down below. If you you'll see a link there that'll take you to it. You can actually download it directly from uh, our website. You, so you just click that and it'll take you right there and download it. Uh, you'll find that there's a couple things. So before I dive into what's happening here, I want to show you the the structure of it. So what we have, of course, the first one that you'll come to is the calculator itself. Uh, after that, you have the advanced version of that where you can type in your own numbers for the horizontal and vertical lines. 
the bit rate, the subsampling frame rate, and of course the overhead TMDS. Um, so I won't go in too far with that because that's another piece that we'll need to explain uh, during that. But then of course the last page will be all the mess. And so uh, I haven't figured out a way to hide that yet. So you're gonna see that there. So just don't do too much with that or else it's gonna throw off the calculations and you have to re-download it. So when, when I was tasked with, with doing this training, I, like I said, I needed to relearn bandwidth and really find out exactly how does bandwidth work on an HDMI signal. So went online, found all the calculations, found out what, how this all works. So pretty straightforward. We've got a resolution that we start with and, and you know, working with this here, I started with 1080, a bit depth of eight bits because on 1080p, that's usually where you're at. It does have 10 bit, 12 bit and up to 16 bit on uh, 1080p. Is that correct, Brent, on 1.4? Well, it's built into the specification. It was never utilized as a functioning specification. So the best you're going to get out of any consumer available 1080p is going to be 8-bit. 8-bit. And then, of course, uh, subsampling really wasn't a thing until until 1.4, right? Or, or was that a 2.0 Because it thing? didn't need to be. Right. Now, we're going to have to reference the bandwidth, which is the big red thing, in relation to the subsampling. And yes. here's why. When when you look at a TV, you know, in 1080p, you've got 1,920 pixels from one side to the other, and then 1,080 pixels from the top to the bottom. Those pixels are grouped in quads, and that's what subsampling refers to. And the real and the second number tells you how many of those pixels get color. Right. And what's important is when you look at your traditional 4K, or excuse me, 1080p, all four pixels get color because they're fairly large. All four pixels get luminous, meaning lighting control, and they get color. When we moved up to 2.0, when the bandwidth went from under five, really, if you look here, it's at 223, up to 10, Right. They didn't have big enough roadways initially. So they had to cut the roadway size down. And they right. did that by cutting colored individual pixels. Now, the reality is, on a 4K set, the pixels are so small that you really can't tell the difference. So on 420, for example, two pixels copied the first two. Three copies one, four copies two. But they each get their own lighting information. And that's the first four. Right. So it lets you, it gives you the appearance of multiple colors without sending the data of multiple colors. And as he gets deeper into this, particularly as we get to 4K, that 444 4, 4 will become a very, very important number. Yeah, the 444 uh, subsampling will come into a huge effect with that. So we'll we'll come back to that though. So now most of the content, Brent, that we're watching in HD on 1080i or uh, sorry 1080p, um, we're watching a, a 30 frames per second. Actually, in fact, most content you're watching is actually going to be at 24 frames per second. Uh, if you're watching movies, uh, even if certain TV movie. shows. Sorry. Uh, most broad most broadcast live broadcast uh, pre recorded. Cartoons. Cartoons are originally done at 24 for, for movies. When you look at the old Bugs Bunny, Woody Woodpeckers, things like that. Right. All the stuff done in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and above is at 30 frames a second. And so you've got that there. Um, so Adam, there is a substantial delay on your voice. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, so let's find out here and see if I can see what's going on. Brandon, do you see that delay as well on my audio? Nope. All right. Just me? It might just be you, Brent, but that, well, we're going to keep running with it and, and see where we go from that. Guys, if, if you see, uh, if you have any questions about what, whatever it is that we're talking about, please leave it over in the comment section uh, uh, down below or in the chat section off to the side. Uh, we are watching that. Uh, we got some new, to new toys to play with today, so if you put a comment up there, we're going to try and put it up on the screen so that we can all uh, share in what we're talking about. Uh, so, Brent, what I want to do is I want to show um, how important all of this is. Now, the reason for the training was really to talk about HDMI 2.1. Um, and I actually started with HDMI 2.0 because that's kind of where we've been and what we've been dealing with. Um, and so 
<laughs> all film is done at 20. Yeah, 90% of all film is, uh, let's see. So Mammoth George is saying here, he says, uh, contrary to me, uh, 90% of all film is done at 24 frames per second. Yes, film is yes. done at 24 frames per second. Most movies that you watch Broadcast. are done at 24 frames per second. Yeah, broadcast is, uh, a lot of the stuff in broadcast is done at 30 frames per second. Um, uh, and on television, just because it's it's more of a standard for that side of it. Um, whereas, and actually, if I understand correctly, I'll have to do some math, uh, some research on it myself, but if I, if I understood correctly, the reason that we did 30 frames per second is because it's half of 60, and we do 60 cycles for our, our power over here, so back in the days of yes. CRT. Yes. Yeah. Now, so, in fact, if you in the earlier days of video, if you in order to show a 24 frames per second content correctly on a 30 frames per second device, you used a 3-2 pull down. Right. Which would take the 24 and adapt it to the 30. But, you know, so there's six frames that they would have to figure out what to do with. As I mentioned, earlier cartoons like the Bugs Bunny, the things like that, yeah, thank you. Two two nine nine seven. Yeah. The older cartoons that were done for film were at twenty four frames per second, which was considered natural and even flow on individual film cells. Yeah, uh, man with George is saying uh, the three two pull down is the bane of producers' yes, existence. Yes, it was, and it created a lot of issues <laughs> for for video files in the early two thousands and late nineties. Yeah, yeah. So when we I talk do about like the new way of showing that, that's awesome. Yeah, isn't that nice? Yeah, I, I, I thought that was great. It's a, it's this new, uh, or it's not new. Uh, there's many other people using it. The Streamyard service. Um, we're we're trying it out today. To see how it works out. So if you guys like it, let us know. We'll, we'll keep trying this. Uh, we might even be able to use it to bring in guest speakers and stuff, and and have it work out really well. So we'll we'll visit that later on. Uh, okay. So Brent, with HDMI 2.0, what's our speed limit? Well, it was 18. Under 2.0 is 18. Now, I'm going to quantify this because when 2.0 first shipped, it was shipping with 1.4 chipsets, claiming right. 2.0, so it was at 10.2. This was the LGs, the Sonys, the Samsungs, the first shippies that didn't support HDR. And in fact, in some cases, didn't even support HDCP 2.2. You had to send, you know, and Sony would send out a technician to physically swap the board out and your brand new TV to make it work. Yeah, change out the chipset, and you actually physically yep. had to change out the board inside of the TV. Yep. So, so with Brent, that, it's eighteen. Yeah. Now, Brent, uh, our speed limit is eighteen gigs. Now, when someone goes online and does some research on their own, and and maybe they're not as deep into the HDMI world as though you or myself or anybody who's doing HDMI production or or development. What is HDMI 2.0 capable of uh, as far as feature sets? Like, are, are, are like you know, 4K, 60 frames, what all is available well, there? Here's where it gets interesting. And it's perfect because of the way you have your bandwidth calculator set up. It is a roadway. It is four, it is four major highways because you have a highway for red, for green, for blue, and for clock. However... Under the HDMI 1.anything up to HDMI 2.0, that fourth roadway was access only for service. All it was was a clock. The first three roads were the functioning highways. Red, green, blue, D0, D1, D2. And if you had 18 gigs, what you had was 18 gigs spread over the three roadways. So it was six by six by six. And then the fourth roadway, again, was just an access road for service vehicles. Clocks who are, you know, the just setting all the red and green and blue back together at the display. So you had right. really per channel six gigabits of capability. Now, when you look at the chart that you created, resolution, bit depth, subsampling, and frame rate, every one of those plays a part because you can't have the best of everything under six gigs, you're not going to get 4K, 10-bit, 444, 60 frames a second under the 18-gig umbrella. But Brent, now, if we go online and we say, now, hold on, uh, you know, HDMI says that we can do 4K, it's capable of 4K, 12-bit, 
444, 60 frames per second under the HDMI 2.0 spec, right? So I I want that. I want 4K, 12-bit. No, no, it's 12 capable bit, of all of those feature sets. Ah. It is capable of all those feature sets, but not at the same time. So that's where the bandwidth comes the in. options. It's, you know, like going to... It's like going out to the dinner, pick one from column A, one from column B, and one from column C. Right. You don't get beef, pork, and chicken for your entree. Right. So we're if we max out our uh, what the, the specs say that they're capable of doing, not necessarily all at the same time, but if we try to do all in the same time, we can see that we're locked in at 24.06 gigabits per second for, uh, uh, of bandwidth if we try to do 4K 12-bit 444 60 frames per second. So, in this case... Right, and that's we're, just bare data. That doesn't, count, that doesn't count overhead and audio. Yeah, well, actually, this, this calculation does. So the, the TMDS overhead is calculated in this, and I'll, I'll oh, show okay. you that in, on the next screen. So we max out at 24 uh, uh, gigs per second if we try to do everything all at once. So that's where that speed limit comes in. And it's not like the speed limit out here on I-4 where... You know, it says 70 miles an hour, but everyone's doing 85. Um, it's, a, it's an actual speed limit. It's where you cannot go past that because the chipset itself that's in the equipment cannot go past that 18 gigs per, um, gigabits per second. So what do we do? Well, in this case, most everything you do with this is okay because we're watching it at 30 frames per second, right? So with at 4K, 12-bit, which is going to get you your Dolby Vision, 444 subsampling, which is technically RGB, that's where all four pixels in that quadrant are getting their own color and their own luminance at 30 frames which per second because most of everything you're watching. Right. Uh, which, yes, exactly. Which brings us down to 12.03 gigabits per second. So we're nowhere near, uh, well, relatively speaking, we're nowhere near that 18 gigabits per second uh, bandwidth limit. And in most cases, you'll never run into a problem with that. Now, that's, of course, before we get into things like HDMI distance and everything else that's because, you know, of, of signal loss and whatever else over longer distances and uh, having to compress things to go over extenders and, and other things like that. So in most cases, you're OK, because you're not actually going to really be watching anything at 60 frames per second, except for our favorite movie of all time, Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, which is going to get you. Really? It's actually you had technically, to bring that up, didn't you? Got got to bring it up at least once. So at 4K, 10-bit, which However, is what Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk is. Any further, yeah. What what subsampling is Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk mastered at? Right. So, uh, oh wait a minute, the master of it is done at 444 because that's during the editing. Now, if you're talking about like when they actually spit it out after that to put it onto a Blu-ray play uh, to a Blu-ray disc. Right. Then that's going to be at 420. Or is it 422? Which is the default for UHD Blu-ray disc. No, it's 420 right. is the default. Yeah. So we've got 4K, 10-bit, 420 at 60 frames per second. Guess what? We're even lower than we were before. So yeah, you've got the, the capabilities of frame rate for 60 frames per second, but we had to give something up. We gave up our bit depth because that, that makes a huge difference. When we go from 12-bit to 10-bit, you can see here 12-bit would be 12.03. Is there and any then if content we go, mastered at 12-bit? Um, yes, because it's mastered at 12-bit when you have the Dolby Vision. Only under Dolby Vision, which is an entirely different way of doing the HDR, and it's actually a smaller package. Right. So if we get once now, now that we know that we can bring ourselves down under the, the, the speed limit of what we want to do, now let's bring ourselves into the HDMI 2.1 and find out where we run into problems there. So Brent, what I've done, I've went ahead and gave us, gave us here different uh, resolution capabilities. So I've got 480, 720, 1080, 4K, 8K, 10K, 1 by one pixel and a two by two pixel because I wanted to show you four by four. This is all in this uh, this spreadsheet, everyone. So if you go on there and download this and, and play with it this way, uh, you'll find that information there. So for this one though, I want to do 8K because with HDMI 2.1, we can do 8K. Well, under HDMI 2.1, technically we're able to do not, not just 12-bit, but we're able to do 16-bit. 
And then, of course, it's capable of 444 because that's the same as RGB, which means that every pixel gets a, its own color and luminance. And at 8K, we're capable of frame rates of 60 frames per second. Now, Brent, what is the bandwidth limit for <laughs> HDMI 2.1? Well, the theoretical limit is 48. However, the practical limit is still 40 because of hardware. Right. So we have a problem then. I am way beyond even 48 gig, uh, gigabits per second. Um, right now, I'm sitting at 128.3 gigabits per second. We are way out there. So what do we do to bring ourselves back in? Well. The first thing that I would do is the fact that, again, most of the content that we're going to be watching in 8K is not going to be 60 frames per second, right? I would give up subsampling before I give up frame rate, but that's me. Well, and and let's and you're not wrong. So with the frame rate, a, a smoother frame rate at 60 frames per second is going to look nicer because we can actually pick up better the differences between 30 frames and 60 frames with our human eyes, with our organic eyes. So you're right. If we can give that up, then yeah, I'm going to do that. Now, whereas our eyes are more difficult to give up or to tell the difference between something that's full RGB color versus something that has part of its quadrants given up in order to do the subsampling. So let's go ahead and give that up. So that brings us down to 64 gigabits per second. So we're still beyond the 48. Now, right now, practically, we're stuck at 40. Uh, yeah, we are approaching the IMAX, uh, let's see, uh, Mammoth uh, George is saying, approaching IMAX level video. Um, yeah, very much so. Uh, in with, with what they're capable of doing out there in IMAX, I haven't done it myself to find out exactly what they're doing in, in the IMAX setups but they're, they're definitely doing some pretty awesome stuff with, with theirs. Beautiful looking picture. Um, so the what we do from here, of course, is that let's look at what's actually out there. Well, 16-bit isn't... It's out there with Dolby Vision as max Dolby Vision. So there's Dolby Vision uh, uh, full and then Dolby Vision light, if I understand correctly. I'll have to go back and look at, at my own video on that on uh, when we were talking with, uh, uh, with David. Uh, about uh, HDR, but they're not using, we're not using 16-bit right now. So let's drop that down to 12-bit. Okay, so we can get 8K 12-bit with 420 subsampling at 60 frames per second. That gives us 48.11 gigabits per second. So we're right at the edge and we probably will have to come down from there because it's 48 gigs. It's not 48 point something with a little bit of a of wiggle room. It's 48 gigs. That's where we're locked in at. So we still have to give up a little bit of something in order to bring it down below. So with that, I'm going to say, let's go ahead and drop down to 10 bit. And so now we're into 40 gigs per second, right? That kind of gets us into that range of where we're actually able to work. So Brent, what does this mean for the installer that's dealing with the customer that's doing their own research? Well, it depends on where the customer is doing their research. If he's focusing on consumer-based forums, it's going to make his life miserable because they're being told that they should have 444. Right. They're being told that they want to support 12 and 16-bit, but they're not being told the math. And my favorite, well, but I'm an engineer. Well, no, I don't think you are, sir, because that math doesn't work. Yeah. So... Let's talk about why this math works the way that it does. So let's now that we've looked at how the calculator works and how much fun it is to, you know, play with the numbers to make it reach within a certain bandwidth limit, which use this guys, this is something that's really important when you're out in the field doing installations. If you are running into a problem, this could be what's going on. You may be out beyond what your bandwidth limit is. We know right now, like Brent was saying, many of the products out there, TVs, sources, uh, whatever else, are not at a full 48 gigs. We're still working with well, 40, stop, and stop. in some cases, go ahead. The word is not many, it's all. This is true. Currently, all sources out there are at a max of four, uh, all sources and all displays are at a max of 40 gigs. Um, unfortunately, that's just kind of where we're at and right now. Why is that, Adam? Uh, everyone's using the same chip, if I understand correctly. That is correct, and the chip's only capable of 40. Of 40 gigs. Now, except for Sony, 
Sony, their PlayStation 5 is actually 32 gigs per second uh, or gigabits per second. So they're actually even a little bit lower than that. But uh, and, that, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a Microsoft fanboy. That's just kind of how it is. Uh, they are down at 32 gigs. But you are um, a Microsoft fanboy. Well, just because I have an Xbox and I play on PC and whatever else doesn't mean that. Whatever. Anyways, um, so use this to your advantage because you can you can instruct your customer and or train your customers to understand that while yes, it's good to have the ability to do all of these things, you won't be able to do all of these at the same time. Uh, I like using Billy Lynn's long, long halftime walk as a showcase to show what's possible and be able to show people that, look, you can get 4K at 60 frames per second, but we have to give up something else. So if we go in here and do, uh, well, for what it's actually giving us is 420 10-bit, our bandwidth is only 10 gigs per second. So that's nowhere near our eight, our limit of 18 gigs. So we can get a really good, good picture out of this. And if you've watched Billy Lynn's Long Half Time Walk before, you'll know what I'm talking about. You get that 60 frames per second, it almost looks unnatural. Um, but it's a really good showcase to, to show people what 60 frames actually looks like. Uh, in many cases, they'll, they won't like it and they'll just want to go back and watch the 30 frames per second uh, movie that they're already watching and you know stick with that. But this is a way to show them that, yeah, you can get 60 frames per second. I'll show it to you. Here's what it looks like. Now, in other cases, you may need to you know show them that, yeah, you can get 444. This is what 444 looks like. And to ensure that you stay within the certain bandwidth limit, you can change your frame rate, change your frame rate down to 60 frames per second, second. bring your subsampling back up to 444. So that's how we make sure that we get our bandwidth to stay within the 18 gigs. And again, same thing. If we want to show them what Dolby Vision looks like, we can go ahead and increase this up to our 12 bit and that will be able to show them, here's what Dolby Vision looks like. And you can know for a fact that you're within the bandwidth limits of what they're trying to do. So we had a problem in the early days, Brent, where the Apple TVs, when they were first uh, uh, using Dolby Vision and a lot of their, their content and whatever else, uh, they gave you basically this setup here where you could pick the resolution, the bit depth, the subsampling, and the frame rate manually. You could go in and set it manually. But what was the problem with that? Well, the problem with that was the TVs wouldn't accept the 444 input correctly, and they tried to go to 60. Yeah, they would They would try to uh, to lock into the, the 60 frames, or the person that was using it would, would try to set bit depth at 12, they would set subsampling at 444, and they would set the frame rate at 60 and try and do all of it at the same time and come up with a black picture and nothing showing up on the screen. Well, That's the same been... problem with the Oppo player. Right, the Oppo could do that as well. So that's where we see the problem here, where, guess what? We're beyond that 18 gigs per second. So, well, and even use this 18, to your advantage. Just because, just because the math says it'll work does not mean the electronics say it will work. Right. Yeah. So we want to make sure that, that we do everything. It, do yourself a favor. Get everything set up the way manually. Get it, get it set up where it's supposed to go at, where you know, where you know it will work. Then hook everything up make sure everything's working there, and then we can find out if there's a problem with it. So use this calculator to your advantage, do some troubleshooting, uh, and we can go from there. So, Brent, let's look at the math of this. How does this work? Now, if we go in here, and I'll show you what's going on with the math. So this is the advanced, uh, the advanced portion to it, and it all, will also show us the math of what's happening. So I'm going to scroll down here to the bottom, and this might be a little difficult to read. I'm going to wrap the text here so we can read it a little bit better. Okay, so the equation is we take our horizontal pixels, uh, we multiply that by the vertical pixels. What that's gonna do is that's gonna get us our total number of pixels. So if we go up here, uh, our total, our horizontal pixels, we're gonna say, okay, we're 1080. And then our, our vertical pixels are, oh, pardon me, nope, we do 1920 for our horizontal, and we'll do 1080 for our vertical, right? So that's 1080p. Now we have our bit depth. So the math from there says we take our vertical pixels and our horizontal pixels, multiply that together, get a big number. From there, we take that, that number and multiply it the, by the bits per pixel. Now, the bits per pixel is interesting because it's not 8 bits. So if we say here, this is 8 bit. It's not 8 bit. It's 24 bit. Brent, why is it 24 bit? 
because you have three channels that you have to send eight bit per channel to. Right. So we have red. We have uh, sorry. We have red. We have green, and we have blue. I almost uh, gave the <laughs> gave the audience the bird. Uh, we have red. We have green, and we have blue. So it's not just what we were talking about before about the TMDS lines, where you have a red TMDS line, a blue TMDS line, and a green TMDS line. It's that you've got red, green, and blue. We're just using the TMDS lines. That's how it breaks it apart and distributes it across the HDMI cable. We're looking at the total bandwidth. And so we have red, green, and blue, that bit depth. We have eight bits for red, eight bits for green, and eight bits for blue, RGB. So we have to multiply the eight by three because we have three channels to work with. So eight times eight times, or sorry, eight times three is 24. And we do the math there, and that gives us 24 bits to, to, uh, to work with. So there's a total of 24 bits per pixel because we have eight, we have red, green, and blue in each pixel. Then we multiply that by the subsampling. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. So we'll go back up here to the top. When you use subsampling, subsampling is actually we're, sub, we're dividing away, we're subtracting away uh, the data that's going out to it. So at 444, that equals one. So Brent, what's a million times one? A million. A million, okay. What's three times one? Three. Okay, I just wanna make sure that we've got basic arithmetic taken care of because it, this is really important for that. So when you look at okay, the Adam. sampling, yeah. What's a million times 0.667? Um, uh, well, you're going you're gonna to give me a hard one to work with here, so I'm going to bring up my calculator. I'm going to cheat. Not really. That's pretty darn simple, Adam. Yeah, well, because it's... Uh, um, uh, we move... No. Yeah, we move the decimal point over to the right. It's 667. There you go. There. No. Yes. See, don't do yes. this to me. You did this to me last time when we did the the speakers. You threw off my 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 <laughs> my, my math and everything. Got me all kind of sort sorts of screwed up. And I and we had to redo that episode. And we saw what happened there, right? Ah, don't do that to me. Well, sadly, 667, I was flying 000. for the. I was flying on that episode and did not see the the repair episode. It was it was pretty good. I, it was great having Joe on Joe Padula from uh, Installer Institute. Um, uh, had a great time teaching me, uh, and we now know why you can't read uh, impedance on a speaker uh, volume control. Do you remember why? I remember you telling me why because it's a transformer. It shows a null. It has to actually work. Right. Which Ooh, Randall. I did Let's not see. know, so I was very thrilled to learn that. Randall brings up a question. He says, "You're uh, you are using active pixels. Do you need to account for full pixel frame?" You're getting ahead of me here. I'm coming to that next, uh, and and I'll I'll show you where I'm coming from next. You you may have seen I I scrolled past it, so you'll see it here in a second. So Randall's bringing up a, a good point here. He's talking about you're using active pixels. We'll we'll talk about that here in just a second, Randall. We'll we'll come back to your question. So subsampling again, four four four. Uh, is 1, 422 uh, is 0. 0.667, and 420 is 0.5. That's because, let's uh, let's do some art with a uh, with this here. I'm going to bring, uh, let's see, bring these two together like so. I'm going to zoom in like this, and here we go. So we've got our pixels here. Ready for this, Brent? We've got our pixels. Can you see that okay? I got five pixels. And, there we go, it's quad. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go, quad. So when we look at, at these quad pixels right here, let's just say that this pixel here is, we're gonna say that this pixel is red. We're gonna say that this pixel is green, and this one's blue, like that, and this one is yellow, or yeller if you're uh, from the dirty south. Um, so what we've got here, is 444 because each one of these pixels in this quadrant is getting its own information. This red pixel is getting red information. This green pixel is getting green information. Now it's 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 RGB, so technically it's getting 25500 for red 
it's getting 0, 255, 0 for green, and it's getting 0, 0, 255 for blue, and then it's actually getting uh, 0, 255.255 for yellow, because there's not really any yellow in the red, uh, or any red in, in the yellow. And that's the information it's getting, but it, they're all getting their own information. That's the important part. The red is getting RGB, the green is getting RGB, the blue is getting RGB, and the yellow is getting RGB. That's the important part. Now, with 420, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, this green one is no longer getting green information, but it is still getting luminance information. So instead of being a red, we want that red to look a little pink or a little bit less because maybe it's a slightly different luminance value. So we'll go in here and we'll say this. And, whoop, wrong one. Like that. And this blue, same thing. It's getting its own luminance value, but it's slightly different. So this is what 422 looks like. So we've got four pixels total. Two of them are getting uh, uh, RGB information. Two of them are not getting RGB information. They're all four, though, getting luminance information. So that's 422, right? Brent, are you able to see that? You're, you're, you're scrunching in pretty close. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's tiny, but it, I can see it. Okay. Hang on. Let's see if, how, how close I can get on this one. Okay. So what about 420? Well, in this quadrant, 420 looks like this. So we'll go over here. We'll get rid of the blue. Turn that into another pink. We're going to turn this one into another shade brighter than that. This is what four two, or sorry, four two zero looks like. All four pixels are getting luminance value, so they're getting brightness. Two, uh, one pixel is getting RGB, and it's sharing that information out between all the pixels. None of the, and then these three pixels here are not getting any color value. They're getting luminance, but they're not getting any color value. So when you do the math, four two two, we'll go back in here and we'll paint this one blue again. And we'll paint this one another slight, slightly different shade of blue. With this information here, we're not having the amount of information because we still have luminance values going to everything else. So we're not quite having it. What we're doing is that's where the 0.667. We're two thirds the full value of 444. So if that makes sense. So from there, when we want to go one step further down into 420, we go ahead and change this out here. We go to this nice shade of salmon or pink or whatever you want to call it, and a nice brighter shade than that. Because all four are still getting luminance values, that's four there. Now we also have RGB going to just one of them. So we're roughly having, it's, and by roughly, it's, it's right at having the amount of data that's going to that quadrant of pixels. So that it creates a quadrant that way. So that's why we're doing it that way. So in this case, we'll, we're gonna keep the subsampling at one. We're, we're gonna leave it there. Then of course, down here, the next part of this equation, sorry for flicking around too much, is our frame rate. So in our frame rate, that works out better. In our frame rate, the next part of this is our frame rate. And just simply multiplying everything that we've done so far by the frame rate. That's 60 frames per second. What that does is that gives us our time variable. Now we're in bandwidth. Now we're in something that actually we can say over amount of time. One gigabit over amount of, of, of time. That's what we're looking at here. Or a certain, uh, the amount of data over this amount of time, over 60 frames. Now, one extra thing's put into this is our TMDS overhead. I will be perfectly honest. I don't know what this is exactly. Other than that, it's kind of like um, when we were talking about audio and the uh, the overhead for audio, it's nice to have an amplifier that's more powerful than what you're actually using. So you have that dynamic overhead for it. So when you get a little bit of a peak, it's able to handle that overhead. So with the TMDS overhead, you have to calculate that in. Now, there's actually two variables for the TMDS overhead, or two numbers for the TMDS overhead. We have uh, 1.25 for anything that's under 8-bit. It's also, it, But it also changes uh, anything over 10-bit, or 10-bit or higher, is 1.125. So the number actually gets a little bit smaller than that. I need to plug in my laptop because we're running out of battery. 
So the team DS overhead, just know that it's there. You need to calculate for it. Now, luckily, I automatically built it into the calculator here. So if you do 8-bit, uh, it's 1.25. Technically, if you do 9-bit, um, that's where it jumps up. So anything above 8-bit is where you jump. You go to 1.125 and anything less than that. So if you were to go down to 1-bit for whatever reason, it's still 1.25. So we're going to do 10-bit in this case. So we multiply everything we've done so far by our TMDS overhead. And all that together is our calculated bandwidth. Right? Brent, anything else to add before I, I move on? Um, no, I think you pretty much covered it all. And calculated bandwidth is exactly that. It's not a fixed, but it's a damn good guesstimate of what's going to be required. Right. So to go back to Randall's question, uh, and Randall, again, this was a really great question. Uh, we're using active pixels versus non-active pixels or uh, versus full pixel frame. Um, you may have remembered uh, when we had the conversation with uh, David Meyer, Mayer, Meyer from uh, Cedia, where we talked about it, uh, HDR, how we have active pixels and then we have overscan. So the overscan or the, the blank pixels, which they're not really blank, they're, they carry information. If you go way back uh, into the days of real, uh, um, real to real video um, and when you look at it, you would you actually film? see film, sure, film, real to real video, film, whatever. Um, if you watch it, if you look closely at the film itself, you've got the frames, of course, and you see that all the time, and that just, you know, one frame, next frame, next frame, next frame. If you look next to it uh, on the film itself, you'll actually see the audio. You At the time, it would have been either mono or two channel, and you would see a waveform printed onto the film itself that gave you your audio. Now, the reason it's called overscan is because <clears throat> that's outside of the actual picture of what you're watching, but it's still on the frame. It's still connected to the frame of what you're watching. It's still used today. When you are transmitting audio over uh, an HDMI signal, there are pixels around the outer edge of your frame. When, so see here where, where I'm at in this picture here, there's actually a little bit of, a, of an overscan <coughs> outside of that that's carrying audio information. So stereo, mono, uh, Dolby Digital, uh, DTS, even Dolby Atmos, all the way up to Dolby Atmos, is being carried on those pixel information on the outside edge. So when we calculate the, uh, the audio inside of the HMI bandwidth, that's why it's so small, because it just carries it in the bit information on the overscan. If you were to move, uh, if you were to take control over the, the, the frame and move it down a little bit and see the overscan, it would look like just fuzz or, or static. But what's happening is you're actually seeing the data information that's on the overscan. It's kind of a cool thing uh, with how that works. Now, that's where also HDR is carried. So this is important because... HDR is metadata. I, I, I know we were, I'm going back into a conversation that we had on another episode, it's, but it's still brilliant with how it works. HDR is carried on that overscan area around the frame. It's not something that you would actually see on the picture itself because it's part of the overscan. It's not in the actual scan of what you're watching. So we still have to calculate that, though, because there's frames outside of that. So when we look at this, and I'm, I'm actually going to go here, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. When you look at this calculator, you'll see that there's on this page here, the, the advanced math uh, uh, page, there'll be this blue section here. Now on this blue section, I gave you the most common uh, resolutions and their horizontal and vertical uh, active pixels. I also gave you their blank horizontal and active pixels because that tells you how much you actually have to do the math for. So if we look at 1080p, we have a, a horizontal, we have 19 by 20, we have 1900 and 20 pixel uh, uh, in, uh, across the frame itself. Vertically, we have 1080 pixels from top to bottom. That's all the, that's the lines going across. And so we have the columns and we have the lines. So with 1080p, our horizontal frame or our horizontal lines, we have an additional 280 lines 
in the overscan section above and below the actual frame itself. Actually, in fact, I don't know if it's above and below. It may just be above. Brent, do you know the answer to that? I believe it's split because there's carriage that tells you to go into the next frame. Okay. So then, of course, we also have the vertical blank. So that means we've got our vertical lines going up and down, and we have 45 vertical blanks on either side. So uh, it's, and again, I think, it, I think you're right, Brent. I think it's split between the two of them. So now, if you remember the older days of CRTs, you could actually mm -hmm. shrink the picture down and see the overscan lines. Right. Yeah. Uh, they, they would call them timing, uh, timing pixels or, you know, set up like that. But that's, that's the overscan. All that information is carried in the overscan. So you need to calculate that. That's stuff that, that is there. That's information that's there. Um, Brent, how much information uh, is different from a black pixel and a white pixel? What's the how, what's the, the yeah, difference as, in the amount of data? Sorry? Well, white is zero color. Black is all colors maxed out. But it's still the same amount so of data. It's still the a same. Zero. You still have to send. You still have to send the same. You have to send the same amount of bit information. One or zero. You have to send that information. Now, if you have a long sequence of anything, you can do a same as, same as, same as, same as, which allows you to drop the bandwidth. Now that's where we get, that, that's, that's when we're, we're in, in the compression world. And, and that's another thing that I want to talk about as well. Wow. We're at 50 minutes. That, that's awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay. So when, um, that's easy for you to say, do you see this? <laughs> yeah. Three of these in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Really quick, uh, when we're talking about, let's see, hold on one second. Randall's saying, uh, da, 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 da. Team DS uses 10-bit word data uh, block. When you use 8-bit color, every level of bit depth you choose uh, adds uh, two bits for Team DS info for H-Sync and V-Sync and uh, definition of the next frame of data. That is the overhead. That there is, you go. That is the Team DS overhead. That's the Team DS overhead. So Thank it needs to be calculated you, in. Thank you, Randall. Really appreciate you, sir. So... When uh, I, I really am digging the new, the new format. Yeah, yeah, isn't that nice? Like how it comes up on, on the bottom like that. Uh, guys, let us know in, in, in the chat section what, what you think about that. Um, okay, so when so like I said, that has to be calculated. So as we're looking at the calculations here, 1920 by 1080 is actually 1125 by 2200. That's the actual amount of, of pixels that are going across the data stream. Uh, uh, the, 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 that's a bad way to describe that. That's the, for each frame, that's the actual number no, of pixels in that frame. that's the correct way to describe that. Was it? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's good. So, uh, big yes to StreamYard. Thanks, Mammoth George. Uh, so, when we do the calculations, we have to make sure that we, we have all that in there. So, instead, when you go back over here, we can't say just 1920 by 1080. We have to say... Well, that's actually 2200 by 1125. So we'll go back you up here. You realize you just tossed out the last 15 years of my education. When I stood in front of people, okay, it's 1920 by 1080 times three times bit, 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 bit. And you just tossed the whole damn thing out the window. Well, and here's the thing. You, uh, what will happen is that you will, you would have noticed that your math was always off by just a little bit. Like you were, you were always missing something. And you thought, oh, well, that's audio or HDR or, you know, something else, right? No, it's just you're missing pieces of information. So that's, that's all that, that that is. I think I did the wrong number again. No, I did the right number. So 1125 uh, by 2200. That's the actual map. So what I did for you guys here on this calculator here, I gave you some preset numbers to work with. I gave you 480, 720, 1080, 4K, 8K, and 10K. 10K is fun. That's where we get into some really fun stuff. But I also gave you one pixel. So you can go in here and say, here's one pixel, right? I also gave you a bit depth of eight, subsampling of 444 because we have one pixel. Now, I didn't actually break down uh, the, the math inside of the 444. All I did was the canned information of one or 0.667 or 0.5. So you have to understand that if you do one pixel, there's no subsampling because you only have one pixel. So you have to make sure that, that you have that kept in there as 444. Oh, we just got a flash of light, uh, lightning. Um, but you also have 
uh, <laughs> uh, Randall uh, saying he, no, you missed it by that much. <laughs> That's great. Um, and what's that? Okay. What is that from, Adam? That's from uh, uh, Get Smart. <laughs> Would you uh, believe? <laughs> So, uh, and I also gave you a frame rate of one because I wanted you to see what, if you take time out of the equation, because a, a single frame, if you look at a single frame, this is what you get. So one pixel at eight bit, with it, which is just RGB uh, for one pixel. We don't have the extra uh, um, uh, words added into it. Uh, with a subsampling of one and a frame rate of one. Now, my calculator shows that it's zero. It's not. It's just way down in there. And there it is. Okay, do me a favor. Throw a frame rate of 120 in on that. Okay. So we'll do a frame rate of 120. You want to do some HDR? How about some yeah. Dolby Vision like that? Now it still doesn't look like much, but remember this is just a single, just one line, not even yep. a line, a single pixel. Um, it's a single let's pixel. Let's do this at 1080. It's one pixel. Okay, we'll jump this let's, up to 1080. Let's do this at 1080. Now here's where it gets intriguing because one of the things we do wanna see is a refresh rate of 120 for live sporting events. So yeah. now drop, drop it def back down to 10. Okay. So if we're looking at traditional 1080p, and one of the things we had always asked for early on was 120 and higher bit. We were not, honestly, the, the, the marketing people were very excited about 4K. The video files wanted higher refresh rate, particularly the gamers. So if Correct. you're looking at a standard 1080p signal that was 225 under 8-bit, 60, 8 bit 60, yeah. At 10 bit 120, we're at a full 10 gigabits of bandwidth. So now, when we, you can. Right, go ahead. Go on. Go ahead. As we get into the gaming, and you've done this on the Xbox Series X. Yep. If you do 4K, 10 bit 420, 120, you're right at the 40, as I recall. Is that it? Yep. Isn't that cool? Wow. Yeah. That's what's really cool about this because with now the thing you have to remember though is that on the Xbox it's it wants to do RGB because of what it is. It's basically a computer, right? So it wants to do RGB which is going to be the 444. That's where the 40 gigs comes in. Now, to now, make things what's also work nice correctly. About this, Go on. To make it work correctly because of the different devices uh, that are out there that are having problems with it, or because of the cabling that you're using, you do may have to drop it, or you may have to drop it down to 420 or even 422. I don't remember if the Xbox Series X has the 422 options, but that brings you down to well within the range that, that you that you need to be at. Now, here's what's fun about this. With 8K, or, pardon me, let me back up, not 8K necessarily. With HDMI 2.1, we now have link training. So with link training, we're running into things where it's no longer a problem for us to plug in an older cable because you're, it's going to work. The way that link training works is it says, hey, I'm a source, I have this content, I'm gonna send you this content. TV says, okay, great, send me that content, I'll watch for it. Well. When it finally gets sent to the TV, TV says, nah, it's it, it's here, but not all of it got here, or it's out of sync, or something else is wrong about it. Let's drop it down a step. Let's go from 48 gigs, let's drop it down to 40 gigs. So, source says, okay, great, I'll send it through. Well, okay, let's see what that looks like. So we've got 8K content, we have a bit depth of 10, let's do 444 at 60 frames per second. Okay, well, obviously we're too high. So what we're gonna do here, so we're gonna go ahead and drop this down to 30 frames per second. Now we're at 40. Okay, 
So the TV has said, give me 40 bit. So source says, okay, great. I'm gonna give you 8K, 10 bit, 444 at 30 frames per second. TV says, okay. That stuff gets over, sent over. TV says, uh, no, it's still not great. I still have drop pixels. I still have this, I still have that. Let's go ahead and drop it down another time. We're gonna drop it down to, I believe it's 32 is the next uh, step that it drops down to. So source says, okay, great, but I'm gonna have to drop down the sub sampling in order to do that. So it says, here's 422. Well, guess what? We're well below 30, uh, 32. We went down to 26. So let's back up and let's say, okay, let's do 8-bit at 444. There's 35. So there's a little bit of, of a play in there somewhere. It may do, you know, 35 or 36 or whatever it is. So let's do this. Let's do 420 or 422. So there's 26. TV says, that's great. I got all the pixels. Everything's good. Now, here's what the TV is going to tell you in the top right-hand corner of the TV. It's going to say 8K. Your customer's happy. <laughs> Customer's happy. That says 8K. Do, do they have an AB comparison to be able to say what it should look like? No. It looks a lot better than what they had with the 4K TV. So, yeah, sure. They got 8K, and it says it's 8K over there. Great. Not a problem. Everything, Everybody's happy. But here's the thing. You have somebody who, who has the ability to have uh, an AB comparison to be able to look at the difference of it, or you go into the world now where we have audio, uh, uh, the hi-fi audio world, where... You have people that are looking for the best quality that they can possibly get. That's where you need to have good quality cabling, good quality sources, good quality displays. Everything from the beginning to the end needs to be good quality because as you make all these connections, you're going to start to see that better quality devices will be able to do our 444. We'll be able to do the 4K60. We'll be able to do, or sorry, the, the, uh, we'll be able to do 8K 10 bit 44430 because now they can do 48 or they can do. 8K 12-bit 44430, right? So they're going to be able to do all of these things with better quality uh, stuff in between. Um, let's do this real quick, Brent, but unless you have something off. else. Yeah. The higher the resolution, the more critical you can see the differences in frame rate. Right. And that's part of the problem because at 8K, 30 frames per second becomes more obnoxious because it's so damn crisp versus 4k versus 1080p right. so as resolution increases you kind of got to drop out color to keep frame rate up so it looks good now when you look at the xbox series x and we've had a chance to play with this it's got variable bit rate variable refresh it adapts all of this for you so on high motion scenes color rendition may drop but you maintain the smoothness of a high refresh rate so let's do the uh, do some questions here really quick. Um, and I'll start here. I'm actually starting at the end and work our way backwards. Uh, the experts are asking, so what do we use in the field to test it? Well, uh, Michael Heiser has a really good response to that. Um, you can spend a lot of money uh, on something like a Teledyne or an Astro measurement device, uh, the, the LaCroix or Astro. Um, those are out there. But if I understand correctly, I think those in the ballpark of like tens of 20 of 30 grand, maybe somewhere around in there. Um, but there's always something to, to, to look at that. Uh, Randall saying here, always drop sa uh, sampling before bit depth, eight bit color equals visual yes. color band distortions. Yes. So, and you yes. lose HDR. As soon as you go from 10 bit to eight bit, you lose HDR. So I, luminance values are greater than color values. And I say HDR should be kept the longest and you're right. So do the sub sampling first. Uh, more, uh, uh, Michael Heiss is saying more than that. Um, so they're out there, they can be tested, but something that you would carry around in the field, you know, from place to place, I don't know if it's going to be something like that. Well, the, the new Meridio 8K generator will be shipping shortly, I believe. I believe so. I, I don't know what it's capable of, but that, that should be coming. So, uh, here's where, uh, th this one's fun now, also by the experts, uh, isn't that the same as display stream compression? Um, yes. So kind of, but no. So when you look at display stream compression, what's happening there is um, it's like the best way that I have to describe it right now with doing, whoops, doing limited research on it is when you take a file on your computer and you run it into a zip folder, a zip drive or whatever, not, not zip drive, a zip folder, you compress it. What that's doing is it's taking information that's inside that file and it's, it's taking 
it's looking at, at, at parts of the file and it's saying, okay, this piece of information is next to this piece of information. Well, that's the same as this bit here. So then it, it throws away one extra bit and it stores that one there. And then it compresses it, compresses it, compresses it to where it's much smaller. There's more stuff happening with the, with this play stream compression. I'm still doing research on it myself to understand it better. Um, by the way, uh, Michael Heiss or anybody else that's out there that has contacts with anybody who is good at explaining that, I would love to get in, into contact with them. Please have them reach out to me uh, or give me their contact information. I would love to talk to them directly about it because display stream compression is a compression ratio of three to one at its max capabilities. Um, and if I understand correctly, By the, way, the way that 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 is what we're using. That is what we're using on our 120 extender. Well, yeah, technically we're using a form of display stream compression on our on our 120 meter extender um, to make it work really well. So um, with the the differences between link training and display stream compression is that link training tells the source device just drop the the quality of the picture. It doesn't tell it to take the information and compress it. You know, stay at 8K, 444, 12-bit, 30 frames per second, stay there, and I'm just going to compress that data and then transmit it. Instead, it's saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're just going to drop it down to a lower, uh, a lower quality. Uh, let's see. Let's go back here a little bit and look. Uh, let's see. Michael Heiss is saying here, this is way back, traditional film is shot in uh, the camera at 24 or 25 frames per second. The different frame rates are for the transfer in the scanner. Video may be 29.97 fractional, 30 frames per second, 6 frames per second, or 120 frames. So that, that's when you were taking it from the film over to the other. 60, but yes. Yeah. Uh, the, but the determinant is how it is transmitted from the source, not the way it's shot or transferred. That's where you have, if I understood correctly, uh, that's where you had the 3-2 the, the, the pull down. Is that where the, that came in, into, uh, into effect? Uh, I'll the three two pull down was to be able to play twenty four on a thirty or sixty frame native device. Yeah, uh, and uh, good old pat on the back for putting the calculator together. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. It it honestly it was something that when I first started here, um, I I didn't have a good answer uh, for some of the questions that I had, and so I had to go out and and uh, and answer those myself. And so that's where the kind of the calculator come from uh, came from for myself. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a response to Michael Heiss's uh, more than just traditional film uh, is shot at 24 frames per second. All of the film uh, production uh, cameras from Red, RE, Sony, and the others uh, are based around 24 and 30 frames per second or 60 frames as an option. Uh, oh, interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. Uh, let's see. Well, they're electronic now. They're not film anymore. Can you imagine trying to run 60 frames or 120 frame on, on actual film? Well, they did. They did. Uh, the the high speed cameras that they used to have would do that. They right, they would but run. That's you. You can't run extended length. You eat up film so fast. Eat up film so fast, and it gets hot. It gets incredibly hot because the physical items in there just running inside would get hot. And and if I'm if if I remember right, they had stories where it would just fall apart. Uh, let's see here, real quick. There was one here uh, from Michael Heiss. This one's great. HDR is 10 or 12 bit, but not, not all 10 or 12 bit is HDR. Correct. Uh, Brent and I had a whole thing with that with uh, Mr. Uh, David Meyer. Again, go back and check out that video. It's probably one of my favorite videos that we've done with uh, uh, somebody from Cedia. Actually, I think it's the only one we've done with somebody from Cedia. But it was great to talk to him about the different HDR stuff. Um, and that's very much true. You can have 10 bit and 12 bit without HDR. But in order to do HDR, you have to have 10-bit or 12-bit. And, of course, 12-bit is where HDR10 Plus comes in and Dolby Vision uh, comes in as well. Um, ta -da -da. This one's pretty cool. Uh, the Olympics 8K content uh, is still only being distributed at, at 60 frames, um, which is really cool that they're doing that. It just means that they're, they're dropping down the subsampling uh, to get it in, when, within the range. Let's see what else we've got here. There you go. Brent, can you read that one? Doug Trumbull's show scan cameras ran at 60 frames per second with a 65 millimeter film. We did not stand in the way when it was running. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to you don't want to be charged for the extra uh, the extra film that's running through something like that. Oh man. Oh, Everybody, more this is fantastic. You don't want that thing to uh, break loose and fling. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine uh, if, the, if the film broke that thing would kill you? 
So I think that kind of covers it. For what we're, Adam? Uh, well, we're, we're sitting over an hour at this point, everybody. So I think we need to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if you have more questions about whatever it is that we've talked about today, please, please, please feel free to reach out to us uh, directly. Um, I, this is the tech support line. I don't know if you can see that or not there. Uh, 386-492-8584 uh, is our tech support line. Let me get out of the way there. Uh, and uh, Or, of course, you can email me directly at adam.rogers at metroav.com. Or you can email Brent at brent.mccall at metroav.com as well. Uh, we'll be happy to talk to you about that. Um, there is this. Uh, th th this. This is kind of an interesting thing. Yes. Uh, when you shoot at 60 or 120 frames, it takes up more storage. Even at 1080p, if you're recording at 1080p, 60 to 120 frames per second. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Hold on. We're not done. Hang on. Hold on. Well, <laughs> we're getting into well, something else. While he's looking that up, let us know what your opinion is of the new format, the, 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 the new bugs, the way it's laid out. Um, I'm really excited about this. All right. Hold on okay, one second. It's a Let's freaky. see. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong, wrong thing. Let's see. Uh, stop screen. We're going to share over here. We'll do a window. Uh, let's see, Seagate, storage calculator. Okay, this is used for um, uh, for calculating for surveillance systems, but we're going to use this as just a really quick example. Um, it, it's going to be uh, a, a little different when you, when we're talking about actual storage. Um, so, but this is basically how this works. Um, zoom in here a little bit so everybody can see. We're going to go down to one camera. Uh, let's see if it lets me do... It does. 120 frames per second. Uh, we're just going to do uh, one hour worth of storage. And I just want to show that because that's that, that we'll use one as an easy way to do it. Uh, we'll do 1080p. And we're going to do MJPEG because we're going to do full frame whatever else. I know it's not really that, but we're, we're, we're going to work with this. You need to go up to high. You do need to go up to high that. Uh, true, yeah, because th that way there's no compression on it. There you go. So 120 frames at 1080p, um, a high frame for one hour is 170 gigabytes of information. That's gigabytes, not bits. Uh, uh, one byte is equal to eight bits. So that's gigabytes of information. So let's just say, let's change this from uh, 120 over to 60. And uh, like that, we're going to be having that information down to 85 gigabytes of information. So that's still a lot of information. I wonder if I can do can I do 0.25 hours in a day? I can. So that's 15 minutes. Uh, what's the math on that, Brent? To get down to one minute. Uh, what? What are you uh, asking? Uh, uh, trying to get down to one minute, but I can't. Uh, so we'll, we'll do 15 minutes. So 15 minutes at, 16, at 60 frames per second at, at 1080p. So then we jump up to 4k uh at 60 frames per second we're all the way back up to 85 gigabytes per second so we'll do this back here to one hour yeah just for 15 that's a minutes lot of content. data yeah and, and and again this is surveillance content this isn't actually recorded content so this is already down to i think this is at starting 422 margin quality um, yeah it's it's already a much lower quality um so yeah it makes a huge difference uh let's see Oh, yeah, th yeah, th this one's good. Shooting on video uses uh, much more storage because the directors think that without film, they can do as many takes as they want. The studio suits uh, hate that as the footage needs to, uh, still needs to be stored. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's going to... Uh, they'll have to change that at some point uh, and get that information across to them somehow. So anyways, I just wanted to show you this really quick. This is just a, a really fun calculator uh, for storage. Uh, we use this for our surveillance. Um, can you put that it, you on can... the link in the YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I'll put it on on the, the YouTube link as well, so you uh, so you all can have that. Um, so uh, everybody, I, I, we really do need to wrap this up. Everybody, thank you so much for uh, for checking in with us. Uh, as always, um, go ahead, Brent. What's next week's show? Uh, we don't have a show next week scheduled yet. I'm working that out. Actually, Brent, after this call, uh, you and I should probably go over. Uh, different uh, uh, different video ideas. If you all have ideas, let us know in the comments or over on the side so we can schedule out the next month's worth of videos uh, so we can get those out there as well. Wait a minute. What's next week's date? 
Uh, next week is the... That's Philip Lamar Jones. That is, uh, yeah, Philip Lamar Jones. That's right. From uh, you are correct. Selling United. Yep. Uh, that'll be a fun show. Uh, in fact, I think you are heading that show up. Is, am I right on that? Yes. So that, that'll be a fun show. Do you know what, what you all are going to be talking about? Uh, Cedia, the past year, the future, who knows? Mostly it's Philip Lamar Jones being Philip Lamar Jones. Right. So, everybody, thank you so much for checking in with us today. Um, uh, oh, really? Digital Rebellion. I'm going to have to look that up. We, we do have to cut this uh, at this point. We're at, we're at an hour and 15 minutes, everybody. Um, but I will look that up. Digital Rebellion. Uh, check them out, everybody, for um, Mammoth George is saying they've got a good calculator for the different codecs and stuff. Um, well, while so, Adam's closing out, I would like to say thank you, everybody, for joining it. I'm uh, out here in lovely Los Feliz, California, suburb of Los Angeles, enjoying the warm weather. And I understand it's been raining every day in Florida. Yep. Yep, it has. So I just want you to know I'm not missing you, Adam. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So, Brent, what do we do? Reboot early? Reboot often? Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. And call tech support. <laughs> and call tech support. All right, everybody. We'll see you all next time. As always, uh, like, share, subscribe. Leave comments down in the comment section uh, and give us a call. And we'll help you out. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>